You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List online. My name is Andrew Mackay-Smith and the interview subjects coming up are from the UK outfit Haken. You're going to be listening to an interview with Ross Jennings and Richard Henshaw. The reason for the conversation is to promote Haken's upcoming tour of Australia, which is happening through June, and I'll read out some dates. The first one actually isn't in Australia. It's in Auckland, which is in New Zealand. That's on Wednesday, the 5th of June. The next one, these are all in Oz. Brisbane, Thursday the 6th. Sydney, Friday the 7th. Melbourne, you've got one on Saturday the 8th. And finally, Adelaide, you've got one on Sunday the 9th at the Gov. So let's have a listen to what the lads have to say. Here we go. Hello, guys. What's been happening? You're in the middle of your phoner grind, no doubt. Your Aussie phoner grind. That's right. Yeah, I feel good. So you're the last one, actually, oh, yeah. today. Sweet. We left the best to last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, have, how have we been treating you, though? We I asked this question a bit, but I know Brits and Aussies, despite our rivalry on the sporting field, are virtually the same. But do you find <laughs> talking to us is a bit different to talking to journos from other parts of the world? I think it's very nice. It's very relaxed, very chill. It's almost like being in a pub and just chatting to a mate. So it's always good fun. Yeah, I mean, we had just like a long conversation about Star Wars in, the, in a re- yes. recent interview yesterday, <laughs> so, yeah. um, which was great. <laughs> yeah, cool. I think I did the same thing when I had a chat to Diego about two years ago or so. We ended up yeah. talking about Pink Floyd, I think, for about as long um, yes. and a lot yeah. of prog stuff for about as long. And uh, yeah, it's always nice when the, when the interviews sort of turn into conversations, I think. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I agree. You know. So you're with um, Scars and Guitars, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've got a, a podcast series. Awesome. awesome. Nice. Yeah. And also, and where, where, where are you calling from? Uh, just south of Brisbane, northern Gold Coast, in the cane fields. Ah. Uh, we're, we're interviewing you now. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like, all good. We came to Brisbane and it was so hot. That was the yeah. hottest show of the whole uh, tour last time we were yeah. there. What was it? The zoo? The zoo. Yeah. I yeah. That's, I like, look, I've, I've played the venue myself and I know exactly what you guys would have experienced <laughs> when you came down. And yeah, I yes. mean, you've seen that it's like above street, just above street level like it is. And the air conditioning is kind of effective, but not really, if you know what I'm saying. And they've got to open the windows and stuff and... Ten minutes before we were due to go on stage, and I think we were like just all passed out on yeah. that yeah. side of the stage, yeah, just unable to hack it. You know. Oh, it's a tough one. Yeah, I think you find I've spoken to I've done done about four hundred interviews or so at this point, and I think we're one of those countries where we all love to drink, right? But it's not really about the you know the health issue aside. No. The fact <laughs> is, if you drink a lot here with the heat, it'll it really hurt you. Yeah. 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 That's a good know. point. Lessons learned. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to issue you guys with a, a very sincere compliment because I've always, I've certainly liked you guys. I only really came across you guys when I interviewed Diego, but I got into you then. And I've been following what's been happening with you guys on Twitter and Facebook and just in the media in general. And as far as I'm concerned, you're really starting to carve out a niche in rock music that bands before you, such as Rush, King's X and Primus, some of my personal favourites, have managed. Now, of course, you're stylistically different to a band like Primus and even even King's X, but fans hold you in very high regard, it must be said. You're one of those bands that a lot of fans don't have a lot of bad things to say about you, certainly ones that I've spoken to. Um, but do you feel as though, uh, a question about the last album, Vector, uh, it pushed, I felt as though it, it pushed you guys further into like that avant prog metal territory. I hate the label. I know it's it's a poor journalistic mm-hmm. thing but what do we do mate we've got to sort of classify it as something for people who haven't really got into you yet but yeah. have have you guys made a conscious effort to produce music uh in that avant prog territory or are you just doing what you guys do naturally when you guys come together in a rehearsal room for example for example i mean honestly the only thing i can think of that was conscious really was that we wanted to just go go into this album making really heavy riffs and and loads of vocal hooks you know mm. and just in general just keep doing what we're doing and uh that that was really the only kind of um uh, you know goal with this record yeah. <laughs> make just to make a slightly heavier record but we're not really thinking about genre or or what we've done in the past necessarily you know it's it's really just as musicians creating stuff mm. um whatever whatever comes to us and whatever feels right you know yeah, I think the result of Vector is probably the most focused album we've ever had. Like we've had heavy parts in songs before, and like ambient sections, and even kind of quirky circus-like sections and stuff. Uh, mm. But with Vector, a lot of the ideas were gravitating towards the heavier end of our spectrum, 
And when we listened back to the whole thing at the end of it, it just felt more concise and more focused than anything we've ever done before. And I think it's um, kind of resonated pretty well with our fan base and we've generated a whole bunch of new fans because of it, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's a really good point. And, and I like the, the point that you raised there about um, you, you've, you've added a bit of heaviness to it, a bit more weight to it, if you like, because I think you guys are at your best when the contrast is at its most, if you like. So, yes. so do you think you'll you'll go even dive in even heavier with some of the stuff you? I know the album was only released last year, so you know, no doubt you guys are creatively just keep on at it. So, is some of the stuff you're coming up with even heavier? I think we've uh, we've got we've got some ideas bubbling around because this year, now that we've done a whole bunch of the tours already, um, we've got some free time coming up after Australia, um, and we're just gonna get 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 down some ideas. But mm. it'd be awesome to take it further and um, experiment with some heavier ideas. Yeah, we've talked about it because we've seen how effective it is at, uh, at our live shows. Um, people are really responding to the, the heaviness. Um, mm. So for us, that's kind of the way to go um, at the moment. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> the, the results um, of, of Haken albums always kind of come out slightly different to how you expect them. Mm. Um, it just It's a kind of journey when you're writing music, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys have another comparison, or, or and I hope this sounds like a compliment because it's it is as far as I'm concerned. But you always reminded me of a cross between Meshuga and Alan Parsons' project. You know, wow. <laughs> I think yeah, if you... well, Meshuga are just incredible. They're just like God, I can't really. Explain. It's like a religious experience when you're listening to their music uh, and seeing them live as well. It's just incredible. So yeah, it's a massive compliment. Yeah, it's a pretty accurate. Um... Yeah, description. <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, I get, I, I get, I guess because I can't really put the music onto the podcast episode when I release it, and I try to give people who haven't heard the artists that I listen to a as close to an accurate comparison as I possibly can. And, and labels and the like are the only thing we've really got, so I prefer to use bands. So to me, regardless, you know, yeah, you might be that so-called prog thing, but those two bands that I mentioned, you, you're at the meeting point as far as I'm concerned. And when I'm sort of hankering for a bit of. Uh, Heavy, uh, heavy Alan Parsons. I definitely reach for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you got you got this tour coming up as well, of course, and that's the reason for the conversation. Um, uh, but you must know by now, you've got a very steady fan base down here. So, what sort of uh, what sort of show are you going to bring down? Is it going to focus on Vector, or is it a really a career retrospective opportunity? Um, no, yeah, we're we're out essentially um, promoting Vector, and we want to. Um, bring that show that we've been doing um, in the US and Europe to Australia and you know not not do anything really that too much different won't give you guys the same experience essentially so yeah it's going to be pretty vector heavy but um, that's not to say we we haven't left out some of our favorites from the older track uh, older albums as well so hmm. um, yeah there should be should be enough to please most people <laughs> Oh, sweet, sweet. And do you get a lot of communication and correspondence from us over the, the internet, as George W. Bush used to call it? Um, yeah, I mean, fans reach out, which is great. Facebook's always been good for that kind of thing, Instagram. Um, so we, we know we communicate with you guys. <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we came last time, it was like two years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think we were kind of expecting um, the uh, response that we got. Um, it was really, there were some really cool shows that we played over there, and it was amazing for us to get such a warm reception. So hopefully we can build upon that this time round. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. Are you familiar with uh, many Australian bands like Cog uh, and uh, you know all those yeah. sort of bands? Yeah, I'm a huge Carnival fan. Um, I love I love Pliny as well. Oh yeah, he's doing well for himself. He's just all over the place at the moment and he's he's an amazing uh, songwriter and guitar player yeah i'm um, pretty, ex- pretty excited to have um southern empire support us in adelaide yeah um this is a, a new cool. band which i'm really into actually yeah yeah and caligula's horse are label mates and yeah. they're an incredible band yeah and uh, once again great songwriters great musicians and yeah great bunch of guys as well mm. yeah from your guys perspective um all of those bands there's there's so many um you know, metallically uh, enshrined bands that are coming out of Australia at the moment. But is is there an identifiable sound coming out of here? I, know, I only ask you guys because you're in the industry and you're obviously from the UK, but do, do you, it's very hard for someone like myself who's in the middle of it to sort of identify if there's a sound. So can you guys hear a sound coming out of Australia that's got a, a similar strain through it that makes it Australian, do you think? Um, if I'm perfectly honest, I, I don't think I've heard enough 
to really uh, define to, to see if there's a def- definite sound. Um, so yeah, no, like from the bands we've mentioned, obviously there's that's quite an eclectic mix already. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, I honestly I couldn't I couldn't say. And that's yeah. the thing about generally progressive music; it's such a broad spectrum. Yeah, uh, so very rarely bands sound too similar to each other. Um, but like you mentioned Pliny and then Kligler's Horse, I, I hear a lot of Pliny and Kligler's Horse's yeah, guitar, maybe the vocals um, technique and, and stuff like that. So Carnival and Kligler's Horse, maybe there's some crossover there. I guess um, if we were to really analyse it, we'd we'd find something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for uh, sure. But um, I think it's a good thing that there's a lot of variety coming out. Um, mm. I wouldn't, I, I honestly wouldn't want a particular sound. Um, yeah, yeah, that kind of restricts you, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, good comments. Yeah, I oh, look. Yeah, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there with that one. I just thought, <laughs> thought I'd ask, you know. But uh, I'll give you another left field question then, because something that's happening uh, in uh, rock and roll at the moment, uh, or not so much rock and roll. It's in, it's more like live entertainment. But are these holograms? So Wendy oh, Dio, yeah. I think, has just announced a Ronnie James Dio traveling hologram. I hope I'm right in saying that. I certainly saw a lot of activity on Twitter right. about it. Yeah. Yeah, what what are your thoughts on that? I think uh, Zappa's doing it as well, isn't he? Um, at least I heard about that. Yeah, so I think the Zappa, so, yeah. Zappa thing is going to be with a hologram of Frank Zappa. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I think it's a great thing. I mean, it embraces the kind of progressive nature of um, everything at the moment because it's everything's going in so many different directions. I think if you can fully nail something like yeah. that, it's um, it's like the sci-fi dream. Mm. I think it's cool. I mean, I'm I mean, totally for it. I don't know what it's like there, but um, um, tribute acts are, are a big business here in the UK. Likewise, sure. massive, That's, yeah. Oh, yes, the Australian Pink Floyd show as well. well I, saw, yeah. I saw them at the um, Albert Hall yeah. in um, London. Yeah. And um, so there's obviously a market for people who want to kind of keep hearing the music of the of our fallen heroes. Um, mm. So I don't, I don't, I haven't really given it that much thought, to be honest, but. I, I guess there's something in that. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Yeah, just to you. As long as they have the, um, you know, the permission and the blessing of the of the families involved. And yeah, I think that that's the one. It's actually going to be his children playing with him. Yeah. So, hmm. um, at least as far as I'm aware. I mean, I, I always I always wanted to see Michael Jackson perform, and that yeah. sadly never happened. In yeah, the I'm with you on that. I would love to have seen him. So, yeah. I would, I would, I've I've been to the Thriller musical and I thought it was amazing. Yeah, that was good. And I, I would just love to see see that. But I don't know. There's something to be said about human beings um, mm. <laughs> being the performers. Yeah. And yeah. actually, that was what was great about the Thriller musical was that you had people really nailing those parts, and it, it wasn't yeah. Michael Jackson. I mean, yeah. But it was as good as you know in some ways. Mm. Yeah, the other thing that I noticed, I haven't heard Eddie Trunk, you know, the uh, the US commentator of all things rock and metal. Um, his thing is to talk about backing uh, bands like Kiss using backing tracks, and Motley Crue, I yeah. think, were doing it as well. But some of these more established acts that are charging a lot of bloody money for tickets to shows mm-hmm. are using a lot of production, you know, excessive. Some would argue Eddie certainly does excessive use of production. So do you think that's important or otherwise, or is it more important that people get entertained? I think there's two elements really. There's the music and there's the theatre as well. Some bands um, really kind of focus on the theatrical side of things, um, and I think that's fair enough if it kind of works with their music. If they've got like a, a larger than life, almost cinematic um, vibe going on with their music, I guess it makes sense. Uh, but for us, we generally like to just keep it as live as possible, mm. and we try and play everything and try and sing everything. Mm. Um, and the, in terms of production. The main focus is on lights at the moment, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, we don't go too crazy with anything else. Um, but the, the music itself has got to be organic and live for us. Yeah, yeah, I could hear that actually from the live stuff that I've heard on YouTube. Yeah, it definitely all comes from very solid musicianship and a, and a really, a really solid creative space with you guys. Thank you. You know. Guys, another left field question. I like asking these tonight. I've had a few interviews, so <laughs> here we go. What's the what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on tour? And I host a not safe for worst work podcast, so you can be as naughty yeah. as you like. <laughs> on the um, on the last tour, something pretty funny happened in Finland. Uh, we played a show, and we were playing Cockroach King. And there was a guy, a guy dressed up as a cockroach <laughs> with a throne on his head. So we pulled him on stage, and he was dancing around for eight minutes whilst we were playing the song. That was um, those kind of moments you always you always remember. 
a bit, a yes, bit, yeah. There's, there's some things that happen on the road, like we got stuck in some snow on the way to a show and had to cancel it, and um, yeah, we, we were just stuck in like a Denny's oh, uh, restaurant. Yeah. 12 hours I mean. yeah and uh yeah these are all kind of logistical things you don't you can't always uh, foresee but um mm. uh, there was another time in boston when the power cut um, yeah we nearly had to cancel the show oh, shit. that was good, actually because the power cut and the um support band uh the drummer just carried on playing and he did a drum solo in the yeah. dark for like yeah. 10 minutes <laughs> and no one could see anything and he just carried on going for it and it was yeah quite a, quite a, quite a i think we were like a, a hair away from just pulling the show, cancelling, and then suddenly all the lights came back on. Oh, <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I remember that. People came back in. Because the uh, crowd were outside, and um, I went outside and was chatting to them, yeah. and then they gave me a lot of whiskey. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'll just have, <laughs> we're not going to play the show, so I'll just have a few whiskeys. And then the lights came back on, yes. and I was, I was completely wasted, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I've never been yeah. drunk before a gig before. A couple of whiskeys is, is the craziest it gets. Yeah. We've had <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. Hey, look, I know that myself, as, as I've alluded, I'm, I'm a, a performer. I, I play covers, so you talk about the tributes and stuff. I've done some tribute shows, you know, 80s tribute shows, that sort of thing. And, um, nice. yeah, I've definitely got a rule, no more than one, two drinks, actually, before I go on stage, because you don't feel like it, it affects you, but when you get up there and you miss your cue, you feel like a right ass. Exactly, yeah. You've got to be as focused as possible and it just takes one drink sometimes to knock you off focus. Too many yeah. notes to remember, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I, I, I like to sometimes, depends on where we're playing and how important, when I say how important the gig is, because being a covers musician, we can literally play to just bar staff and no, no paying customers at all or no customers drinking at all. Um, those nights there, we like to experiment and sometimes we like to see how drunk we can get before we keep everything together. <laughs> Hope the agent isn't listening to this, but that's life. <laughs> you know, it was fascinating watching um, the the Motley Crew biopic. Oh yeah, uh, it's oh, just yeah. it's just been released. It's called The Dirt, and they're kind of they're, all their antics. Well, how much they got away with um, as like you know stadium performers, and it's just crazy how they just maintain their lifestyle. It's, um, I couldn't, couldn't imagine doing it. And I, Need to watch that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think um, J.K. Lee though, who was present for that. Have you guys have, have you? Well, you've seen the the one of you have seen the film. Obviously, so I can't tell yeah. which one. To be honest, because I can't tell which one's Ross or Sorry. Which one. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, my, my wife saw it when I was on tour, but um, I yep. still haven't seen it. Yet. She thinks that's what you get up to. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the meme? Have you where it's like what people in bands think I do, what I yeah. what I want to do, and what I really do. <laughs> and honey That's and go it. to bed at like just midnight listen to, listen to metronomes and, <laughs> and read books <laughs> in bed yeah. but apparently you know I was listening to I was reading with interest on Blabbermouth J.K. Lou who was Aussie's guitarist of course through a big part of the 80s um, yeah. he was present well he this is what he said he was present during that scene by the pool where Ozzy right. snorts the ants yeah. and Nikki Six or Ozzy licks Nikki Six's piss, and he said it didn't ha he said the piss happened but he said it was never a line of ants he said it was a single spider so right. the devil's in the detail there with a lot of that stuff. And a few other people yeah. have come out and said, for guys that had pretty serious substance issues back in the day, they remember a hell of a lot. Yeah. You know, mm, yeah. so how much of it is actually, did it really happen and how much of it is it embellished? Sure. I guess that's right. Yes, um, people glamorize things, don't they? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. It was entertaining anyway. And uh, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, lads, that's, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on carving a stellar career so far. Long may you continue to do it. And, you know, these shows down here are going to go well, so just enjoy them. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so you. much for the interview and see you at the show. Absolutely. What one are you coming to? It's Brisbane. Br Brizzy. It? Yep, yep, Brizzy. Uh, yeah. so, so get along to that yeah. one. So, <laughs> this time. For sure. All right, lads, have a good one. Nice one, mate. Cheers. Take care, man. See Thanks so much. Catch ya. You have been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith and the interview subjects you just heard from are Ross Jennings and Richard Henschel from the UK outfit Haken. Thank you so much for listening.